Hello, this is Vichuala the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. I started playing chess again about a year ago, after having been inspired by the Netflix series The Queen's Gambit. I hadn't really played since I was a primary school student. On 30 minute rapid games on chess.com, my initial ELO rating was probably in the 700s. In the past year, I've improved to the beginner intermediate level, with an ELO rating of the mid 1100s. This game was a casual matchup with a friend and colleague from the other side of Australia. He's earlier in his chess journey, and though a little embarrassed, was happy for me to cover this game in a video. As I played and reviewed this game, I realised that there's a lot of potential learning content for beginner players. Please enjoy! So let's have a quick look at the review first. So in this game, um, I played uh, relatively well, you know, accuracy of 86.4%, um, uh, and a reasonably commanding lead uh, over uh, over my mate. And um, uh, you know, I, had, I didn't play completely perfectly. Certainly, some inaccuracies, and mistakes. But my, uh, but my friend had quite a few more inaccuracies, and I think it'll be useful to uh, have a look at that uh, in context. All right, so in this matchup, I played white opponent black, so I played e4, they responded appropriately with e5, and is uh, typical with how I play at the moment, I played the Vienna game, so knight c3. Uh, now, uh, my mate, he responded with uh, potentially quite a principled uh, response, knight f6. And in this position, what I usually do is play the Vienna gambit, so f4. So inviting a capture of that pawn. And in this game, my, uh, my mate does in fact accept the gambit. And one of the things uh, that I sort of, uh, when I sort of chatted with my friend afterwards, was that he wasn't familiar with this opening. And uh, in this sort of situation, um, you know, it's always important to be a little bit suspicious of opening gambits uh, because they're often tricky. There's often something, uh, there's something about them that leads the gambit to potentially be good. Uh, um, and more than that, the opponent who's playing the gambit will probably understand the system better than you, especially if you're not familiar with it at all. Now, in this case, taking the gambit, uh, accepting the f4 pawn is bad, uh, as you can see. So um, even though I'm now down a pawn, uh, Stockfish's evaluation is almost plus one um, for white. And the reason uh, I've shown this in other videos before is that it allows for e5. So this knight can potentially go to these squares. Um, all the squares still um, sort of on the main part of the board are, you know, are defended by my knight and queen. Uh, and so potentially the only good move left for black is to retreat the knight back to g8, undeveloping the knight. Um, and in fact, that is the best move for black. Now, my opponent, uh, now my mate, no, does uh, bring, uh, uh, move their knight back to g8. Now, this allows me to develop my other knight, so now I'm substantially ahead on development. Um, my mate now brings out the queen, queen e7. And again, this is a mistake. Uh, as you can see, now it's almost plus four uh, for white, and this, <laughs> and we're only at the moment uh, on turn five. And one of the uh, so one of the other things about uh, uh, no, in terms of tips is that you have to be very careful moving your queen out early uh, because it is at risk of being chased around the board. Now, the most principled move for me here is to play. Um, d4, uh, supporting that, uh, that pawn on e5, and also opening up the diagonal um, to recapture that now uh, hanging pawn on f4. However, in this game, I thought that I would play uh, a little bit more spicy, I suppose, directly threatening the queen right away with knight d5. And now this move both um, threatens the queen directly, uh, but also threatens the pawn on c7. 
and that is a move that forks the rook and king. So this is potentially quite a powerful move, and this is again one of the reasons why bringing out the queen early is often problematic. But as you can see, the best move for me um, is probably the more principled move, d4, but here I was trying to create threats. So one of the potential things that one can do is um, uh, if you create a lot of threats, often the opponent may make a mistake. Um, uh, and yes, so one of the biases that we often have is that uh, once we've so pushed a piece forward, it's hard psychologically to retreat it. So, so, uh, so you know, kudos to my mate for uh, for actually uh, undeveloping their knight, now identifying that that is the best move. But in fact, here the best move for black was again undeveloping their queen back to d8. So even though this looks like it threatens and protects. Um, this doesn't work because now the queen is out in the middle of the board and is at very high risk of just being chased around. Um, and so uh, I can now recapture that hanging pawn uh, with my knight. Um, my mate develops d6. Um, however, now I've got d4. So threatening the queen with a pawn uh, this pawn cannot be captured uh, because it's defended two ways. Um, the opponent cannot capture that pawn now, given sort of uh, uh, given that you know they have to try to protect their queen first. And importantly, it's not so easy for the queen to retreat now to a safe square. Opponent uh, plays uh, c6, uh, which is a good move, uh, the best move in this situation. Um, and really what they needed to do is to evacuate the queen back to safety. Now here I saw a potential strategy. So the queen and the king are now on the same diagonal, um, which means there is a possibility that the queen could get pinned against the king. Uh, and so if the bishop could go into this square and be protected, and obviously the queen can capture the bishop as well, uh, then that would be a queen loss. So that was the logic behind playing a4. Um, no, Stockfish liked the move. Uh, and this basically uh, allows if the opponent doesn't uh, move their queen to the right square uh, afterwards, that queen is potentially lost. Uh, and unfortunately, the opponent uh, doesn't see the strategy. So the suggestion from Stockfish is to play a6, which would block uh, my uh, my bishop to b5. Uh, in fact, they decide to uh, to gobble up a pawn, uh, leading to um, no, their queen now being pinned against the king and basically now lost on the next move. Let's develop uh, f6. Yep, probably would have been better to just straight out capture that knight, accepting that queen is probably lost. I take the queen, captures back, uh, and here I now capture with the knight. Now again, the more principled approach would probably have been to straight out capture with the pawn, um, but here what I was potentially trying uh, trying to do, uh, given that now I'm up on material, was to try to trade pieces as quick as possible. Uh, the opponent, um, you know, retreated their, uh, their knight to e7, which was probably not the best move. Um, and again, the, the, more, mo the more principled move for me here is just to play conservatively. Uh, however, I decided to push that pawn forward. Now that's not necessarily the best move uh, because there are two attackers here. Uh, and, uh, but you know, I potentially saw a sneaky trick. Um, opponent plays, uh, plays pawn, which was the correct move. Obviously, if they take, I take back. And again, I'm, I'm happy to trade pieces at the moment. Um, here, I decided to now play queen e2, so potentially lining things up, you know, that there may be a discovered check in the future, depending on how the opponent plays. So that was a mistake uh, by the opponent. It would have been best for them to capture with the pawn, though realistically it doesn't make a lot of difference here. Uh, now I can capture back with, uh, with, my, uh, with, my, uh, with my knight now. They capture 
and the problem now for the uh, for the opponent is that now there is a discovered check and now I've got uh, you know that rook is now toast um, so because they have to respond to the check uh, that move otherwise doesn't seem possible because it seems like that square is defended but the opponent must deal with check prior to any of these other moves so block with bishop which is actually the best move I believe I capture um, now the uh, the rook um, here the uh, yeah, that would have probably been the best uh, best move to start pr uh, producing threats of their own though there are challenges with that as well um, again because I would probably just block with uh, with my bishop my goal is to trade pieces wherever possible um, that knight is trapped pretty much in the corner anyway so rather than wait for it to be captured I thought I immediately um, just just get uh, get an extra uh, get an extra pawn so basically trading the knight for a rook and pawn that's a very very good uh, good trade opponent captures back with king and now I have the opportunity of check with short castles now it's important to keep vision on what the king is potentially protecting so the king is protecting that bishop um, and so by moving the king out of the way into that position uh, that bishop is now hanging uh, and again captures with check so very powerful a very powerful move and a mating net has set up so inevitable checkmate is now unavoidable I have to admit that I couldn't see I, I can't normally see mates uh, mate in sixes uh, though I did know you know 11 points up on material it's very very unlikely that I will be losing at this point opponent uh, moves their king uh, however I now have another check opponent now forced um, to uh, to a king to the corner and when you are up on material particularly when you're up on material uh, like this it's quite okay to sacrifice material so here uh, rather than trying to um, you know shuffle things around and keep my queen that would be a um, that would be a forcing move so it'd be check um, with um, uh, Basically, uh, there is only one forced move by the opponent, which is they have to capture my queen with their rook, which then allows me to capture back with my rook, uh, leaving the opponent now with only their knight, which pretty much makes it impossible for them to win and also simplifies the end game for me. So captures, so yeah, that's a more principled, a principled move, but here I was aiming for simplicity. As I said, I can't see uh, mate in eights, mate in nines, so captures captures back that's a forced move and now move the rook out of the way threat with a threat on the knight um, now that's a uh, that's a good move um, by the opponent um, check it would have been better to bring the, um, the, the king out uh, out out and about I suppose because now the king is trapped onto uh, onto the um, into what is my my eighth rank onto their sort of their home their home rank uh, and rooks on the seventh and second are very powerful because it completely constrains the movement of the king I now capture uh, that pretty much that free pawn um, opponent captures with knight I need to move uh, my rook out of the way and that is no longer possible given that's defended by my pawn I move the uh, uh, move the knight you know that's that's a good position slip the bishop all the way here uh, basically that now uh, prevents any mobility here so the king is basically trapped to only these two squares now the opponent here um, has has trouble so basically mate here is unavoidable um, so that's potentially a fine move um, pretty much the next move here would be checkmate so captures and checkmate so good game uh, from my opponent um, but you no know, quite a few you know uh, mistakes which were made which are very common I remember making all these mistakes when I was a beginner uh, as well um, but good game GG so some tips for beginners be careful with playing or accepting early gambits that you're not familiar with they are often tricky and invite errors 
The general strategy of trying to control the centre with pawns and developing your minor pieces early is a sound one. Be careful bringing the queen into the game very early. It can get hassled and chased around, you may lose tempo and even your queen. And in that, keep an eye out whenever your king and queen are on the same diagonal. In this game, the queen was pinned to the king resulting in an early queen loss. And similarly, keep an eye out whenever your king is on the same file or rank as the opponent's rooks or queen. Discover checks are a forcing move and make possible what seems at first glance to be impossible in terms of threats and captures. I hope this video was helpful. Merry Christmas and thanks for watching!